Joseph Carter. My name is Joseph Carter. I'm a two-time Iraq War veteran. I'm a two-time Iraq War veteran. And this is the only occupation. And this is the only occupation that I believe in. That I believe in. For ten years we have been engaged. For ten years we have been engaged in wars that have enriched the wealthiest one percent. In wars that have enriched the wealthiest one percent. Decimated our economy. Decimated our economy. And left our nation with a generation. And left our nation with a generation of traumatized and wounded veterans. And traumatized and wounded veterans that will require care for years to come. That will require care for years to come. The time in which we find ourselves, the time in which we find ourselves, is defined by corruption and lack of a government accountability. Is defined by corruption and lack of government accountability. As a veteran, as a veteran, as a member of the 99%, as a member of the 99%, I find this unacceptable. I find this unacceptable. And I call on all veterans, and I call on all veterans, and all service members, and all service members. Who find this equally unacceptable? Who find this equally unacceptable? To stand with the 99%. To stand with the 99%. Come to your local occupations. Come to your local occupations. Show your support openly. Show your support openly. Raise your voice and say. Raise your voice and say. I am a veteran and I am the 99%. I am a veteran and I am the 99%. majority of people that serve in the military are from the middle and working class. This one percent that people keep referring to don't fight these wars. They're the ones that benefit and the 99 percent are the ones that fight it. That's why veterans across the country are identifying with the people. That's why service members across the country are identifying with this movement and with the people. My name is Paul Sylvester! My name is Paul Sylvester. I served, I served 13 months in Iraq. I served 13 months in Iraq. After six months, after six months, I turned in all my ammunition. I turned in all my ammunition. I refuse to take any orders. I refuse to take any orders. No more convoys. No more convoys. They made my life hell for 10 more months. They made my life hell for 10 more months. I chose to not bring my hell on the Iraqi people. When I chose to not bring my hell on the Iraqi people. When I was finally freed from the imprisonment of the military that I suffered. When I was finally freed from the imprisonment of the military I suffered. I spent years traveling around this country homeless, unable. I spent years traveling around this country homeless, unable. To communicate with society, my family, my friends. To communicate with society, my family, my friends. Constantly being pressured. Constantly being pressured. Constantly being pressured into taking veteran drugs, VA drugs. Into taking veteran drugs, VA drugs. They would cut me off the drugs. They would cut me off the drugs. Just long enough to withdraw. Just long enough to withdraw. And then put me right back on. And put them right back on. Most of my family, most of my family, thinks I'm crazy. Thinks I'm crazy. And need to be medicated. And need to be medicated. What I need, what I need, is community. Is community. We are the 99 percent. We are the 99 percent. I'm the NW member. Thank you.
friend Scott was injured last Tuesday. My friend Scott was injured last Tuesday. This is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. Those in power. Those in power. Are threatened. Are threatened. Because the people. Because the people. Want their power back. Want their power back. My friend Scott. My friend Scott. Was utilizing. Was utilizing. His freedom of speech. His freedom of speech. And that is exactly. And that is exactly. What they took from him. What they took from him. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, part of that's the reason why I'm here, besides the fact that I support this movement, is because of the passion Scott showed for the movement, how much he talked about it. Um, I remember one day not long after uh, like a meeting, we were, we were sitting on the steps, and Scott was talking to me about how um, he was working at, during the day and going to the Occupy SF encampment at night and sleeping there and taking part in the marches and just how happy he was to be a part of that and to be doing that. And so, that really made me think, that really enforced what I had already believed about the movement, and that was a worthwhile thing, and it made me want to be even more active than I had already been in it. We have the passive support of the majority of the military community. It's, it's hard to speak out and it's scary to speak out while you're in. And that's why we have to speak for them. Um, and there are many um, active duty members that are of, of Iraq Veterans Against the War that are current ser currently serving. And um, I mean, if you just look at the polling, the majority of service members and veterans are against the wars. And that should be obvious because they're the ones who have to fight it. They wave the flag when you attack. They wave the flag when you attack. When you come home, they turn their back. When you come home, they turn their back. And we're right and wrong. You're right. Louder. We are 99%. The world is we watching. Are.